Uh, next up is David Delagardel, and the title of his presentation is The Symbol of the Sword, Rekindling Hope and Memory in the Modern Mind. Uh, David is a sole owner and operator of Cedar Lore Forge, where he produces handcrafted historical and mythopoetic swords and fine art. David has been studying art and the craft of ancient European blacksmithing for the past 14 years and has been working as a professional self-employed swordsmith and illustrator since 2009. He's also pretty young, so that's awesome. Um, he's worked on films such as Marvel Comics Movie Thor and cur the currently in production film The Narrow Road. He has sold cu custom hand-forged swords and knives to clients around the world to places as far as China, Finland, and more. He's had the privilege of studying original artifacts, hands-on in the Royal Armouries Museum in England, and has collaborated with some of the best bladesmiths alive today. <laughs> yep. So uh, I'm a full-time blacksmith, sword maker. It's a very fun and strange job. I went to Ball State University for a short time, but in 2009 became full-time in the craft. Uh, and so my talk is The Symbol of the Sword, Rekindling Hope and Memory in the Modern Mind. So I'm going to talk about memory first and then go to hope. I think those are two helpful words. So yeah, I've been learning this craft. I've been a student since I was like 14, and I'm 27 now, so about 14 years I've been doing this. Uh, and hope and memory are just, I think I've recently realized they're the two most hopeful words in defining why I love doing this craft. Um, so we're talking about form tonight. These are the most, the most ancient known swords to archaeology in the world right now. They were made in Turkey, the Aslan Tepe swords, made over 5,000 years ago, made out of arsenic copper. I think they're just incredible. They're beautiful. And, and actually, a lot of historians think that there are much more ancient swords than these that were organic that have been lost in time. Uh, on the left, you see some of my favorite Celtic bronze swords, uh, and then uh, my own illustration of some slightly mythic uh, renditions of how I would make them if I crafted them at my forge. So going along with the thought of form tonight, uh, I love asking the question of what makes a good sword. <laughs> I'm an unashamed Tolkien geek and geek of all things fantasy and history, uh, so it's just such a fun topic. On the right, you've got a super epic, incredible sword, the, uh, uh, the Kaywood sword from Yorkshire, England, and then one that I made fresh out of high school, uh, a, a copy of it. So uh, the, the question of what makes a good sword uh, for me, is just more fascinating than, oh, they're old and ancient or they're sharp and dangerous. Uh, I think we as human beings, you know, whether it's spiritually, evolutionarily, biologically, I think these objects are so important to us, to us because obviously in ancient times they were life or death. <laughs> this is one of my favorite swords I just finished recently. Obviously, the new one on the right, the, the old one, it's an Anglo Saxon sword for a really awesome customer. Um, but, you know, the sword is it's such a powerful symbol because obviously in ancient times, they had power, they, you, know, you, you died or you lived at the sword. And uh, we also in the modern age have such a fascination with swords. You know, it's funny, you would assume in this postmodern age people would throw stuff like that away. Oh, we don't, we don't need silly fairy tales, you know, but you can't turn on Netflix or go to the movies without seeing epic swords or sword stories. Um, obviously, like I said, I'm a huge unashamed Tolkien fan. He changed my life and same as C.S. Lewis. And uh, a lot of my work surrounds uh, the works of Tolkien. Um, so, and. And I learned from him, not only from the stories themselves, but how he told his stories. Um, Tolkien was a scholar at, at Oxford uh, of ancient language and literature. He, unlike most authors, you know, started with words, or started with a language and then built a story around it. Most people start with a story and build a language around it. So I'm trying to do the same thing with steel, iron, wood, and leather and whatnot, and just try to bring people into history and art, uh, especially young kids. Like, why do people change? when they're around a sword. People who usually don't care, you know, when, you, when you're in the presence of a sword, you're either scared or you're excited, you want to hold it, people straighten up. And some people are, like I said, very scared. You know, they think, oh, it's just a symbol of violence and evil. You know, we need to forget about that stuff. But uh, one of my biggest arguments on the topic of hope is that I don't think the sword needs to be an evil, dark symbol. Uh, this quote from Tolkien, I think, perfectly articulates better than what, what I'm saying. Uh, in Lord of the Rings, he said, I do not love the bright sword for its sharpness, nor the arrow for its swiftness. Uh, nor the warrior for his glory. I love only which that they defend. Um, perfect. I think he just nailed it on the head. Uh, you know, the sword, it is a terrifying object. When you think it has one purpose, that's to kill. But, but it's also like an oxymoron. It's, it's a strange paradox. It's beautiful and deadly. Uh, and unlike modern weapons, it, you have to be honorable, you know, or if not, you're going to be very evil holding this object. Uh, it, it really calls out our inner struggles as human beings. I mean, we're I think we all are born with an innate desire to slay the dragon and 
fight for justice, we get angry when justice doesn't happen. And so that's something I really want to tap into with my work. And obviously it's my personal opinion, but I truly believe that, you know, right and wrong, good and evil are objective, absolute things. That's not to say that the world is black and white and cut and dry. There's clearly gray, and, you know, life is difficult and there's moral ambiguity. But, uh, you know, I disagree with the postmodern age that says, ah, whatever floats your boat, there's no such thing as truth. No, truth exists, and the sword faces us to, to deal with that reality. Um, you know, when a sword is put in your hands, whether you're a modern person just appreciating it, or especially an ancient person, you know, your heart came out. If you are a wicked, selfish person, you're going to do wicked, selfish things with it. Obviously, swords don't kill people. People kill people. <laughs> so in my work, I try to take this paradox of the symbol of the sword. I make real swords, too. I mean, I try to make them pretty and beautiful, but they are razor sharp and fully functional. Um, and I, I hope my swords are conversation starters. I hope they challenge people. You know, break down your assumptions. Um, don't make assumptions about reality. Question yourself. Be a skeptic of yourself and your own assumptions. <laughs> I love the topic of you know kids and swords. Why are kids so attracted to them? I have funny memories in, in middle school and high school of doodling swords in my math book and my teacher gasping in horror, being like, oh, you're David, you're drawing evil weapons, symbols of violence, you know, freaking out. And very sweet person, you know, I know they're well-meaning and loving, but uh, I respectfully disagree. You know, the sword doesn't have to be a deadly, evil, dark weapon. Uh, it, for kids especially, both boys and girls, I think, can really learn a lot from the symbol and the object of a sword. You know, it teaches responsibility, and I think most importantly, defending weak, defending the helpless, defending the innocent, um, justice, truth, honor, uh, and questioning yourself. Uh, and so that's what I try to really try to get into. And then just appreciating it. You can appreciate swords from a distance and own them and practice with fighting with them, but I make them. That's a whole other discipline that I could talk for hours about. Uh, it takes a lot of time, uh, time management, patience, skills, all of which I lack and I'm terrible at, <laughs> so I'm trying to grow as an artist in my craft, but I really want to teach the craft itself to other people and to kids in the future. So um, that's what I do. That's why I love doing it. Uh, I think hope and memory are helpful words in defining why the sword is a good thing. It doesn't have to be evil. It doesn't have to be dark. Uh, we as human beings have the choice to, to live moral lives and fight for truth. And uh, I hope my swords are a conversation starter for that. So thank you for listening. <laughs>